Hello. I changed my decoration. I hope very much that you understand what this is. What I want to express with this, because I'm not very happy about the situation. I'm not very comfortable. And this is the compendium of discomfort. And my name is Michael. And uh, yeah, we're going to have to talk about that later. It's kind of an element of this story that we're going to talk about here now. But we're going to focus on that issue in a separate video. Because I already ranted about that issue very much when it comes to this movie. And this movie is actually very very good and i don't want to ruin another like review of this movie uh, by talking too much about my one issue that i have with this look it's, it's such a beautiful nice movie movie it's wonderful you should all watch that i want to point out that out first it's a very very good movie it's called the young strangers or uh, Wakaki Mishiranu uh, Monotachi by Taku, uh, Takuya Uchiyama, who has made a movie before that's called a Sasaki in My Mind, which I think I have seen at the Nippon Connection. And he did some other movies that I haven't seen, but a Sasaki in My Mind, I think, if I'm not completely wrong, is available at uh, Saka. You know, these lovely people whose movies I sometimes review, and we will come to another one of their movies quite soon. Um, but yeah, today we're going to talk about The Young Strangers. And just to get my biggest issue with this movie, my only issue with this movie, it's really, really good. And I don't want to spend time talking on my hate about this one issue that's blue and orange. Yeah, everything in this movie is color coded blue and orange. We have a messy kitchen that's supposed to look very real, very realistic, and it's just blue and orange, and it drives me crazy. And I don't understand how someone who's obviously as talented and great as this director, who did music videos before, so he knows how to put things in a like visually appealing way and he knows how to present stuff he cares about visual uh, elements of his movie like this movie looks gorgeous besides this crappy um choice of color and i don't get it so i will make a separate video just about this one issue where i just let it all out all the ranting and complaining and i don't want to talk about this here anymore i just want to say it really really distracted me from the movie it took like half the movie to really suck me in and not always just thinking like why is this woman playing with a blue folder why the box in the background is orange or something like that yeah, it's so distracting, it's so bad, and I don't get it why every filmmaker does it. And we'll talk about that later. And that's the only issue I have with this movie. Besides that, it's wonderful, it's great, and I loved it very, very much. So let's complain about that later. <laughs> yeah, If you don't care about this, I highly recommend watching this film. If you care about this, like I do... I still highly recommend watching this movie, even though you will suffer quite a lot. So, yeah, let's just talk about it. Let's get on with it. Um, let's maybe look at the cast first. Yeah, we have uh, quite some notable faces, maybe. We have Hayato Isomura, who was, for example, in Plan 75, or A Fish Tale, or a Tokyo Revengers, and... Uh, in the pretty bad uh, Holic movie. Oh, and he was in that uh, Hard Days uh, remake, um, which is half good, half weird. And then we have Yukun, uh, Yukino Kishi, who was in Lesson of Evil, or Homunculus, or Small, Slow, But Steady. And uh, one day you will reach the sea, another director who we should keep an eye on. That was uh, Ryutaro Nakagawa. 
And then with Shodai Fukuyama, who was, for example, in the uh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure live action movie, or we made a beautiful bouquet. We have a Shota Sometani, who seemingly is in every movie and is really good here. Uh, yeah, most famous probably for stuff like Himizu or uh, Tokyo Tribe, uh, but he uh, spoke some characters, for example, in Suzume or Wolf Children or Bell or The Boy and the Beast. Uh, yeah, but he has worked with many, many very notable uh, Japanese directors, so there's a high chance you have seen him. And he's the husband of Rinko Kikuchi, so uh, yeah, good for him. Uh, we have uh, Ken Kenichi Takito, um, very famous for First Love or Lesson of Evil, but uh, same with Rudoni Kenshin or The Wonderful Fish Story. Um, then we have uh, Kosuke Toyohara, uh, most famous for some Godzilla movies uh, like Godzilla vs. Biolante or Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, but he was in Mr. Baseball. Who doesn't want to be in Mr. Baseball? We have Reika Kirishima, who was, for example, in uh, Drive My Car on uh, Norwegian Woods, so two adaptations of Haruki Murakami novels, and then she was in Godzilla Final Wars and uh, Versus and uh, Shia Was No Pun, so Bread of Happiness, which is a cute movie. We have Ku Izima, who was in Onoda or in. Um, uh, I am what I am. He was in uh, Desert of Namibia and Dare to Stop Us. And he was even in that movie. That's a Life of Mariko in Kabukicho. Very good movie, even though it's uh, pretty ugly as well. Um, then we have Miji Ka Nagai, who was, for example, in Perfect Days, the uh, Wim Wenders. Yeah, and we have uh, Ryunosuke Azuma, who was in Mew on the Shore and Over the Fans. Um, and oh, here we have one more. We have Hiroyuki Onoue, uh, Love Exposure, uh, Asakusa Kid, uh, Sangatsu no Ryan. So the anime adaptation, not the other very good movie. Uh, he was in uh, uh, Neo Ultra Q, uh, Pachigi, and the very good uh, Rollless. Um, which will probably not be as bigly uh, promoted as it should be because of some scandals of his, uh, its uh, main actor, Tedo Yuki Kawa, who did some nasty stuff. Too bad. We have Shinsuke Kato, uh, known for A Man, Onoda, Small, Slow, But Steady, a Samurai Marathon and stuff. Uh, missing, he was in there. And we have Akira Otaka, uh, for example, Cure, a Charisma, License to Live, Outrage, Coda. And a lot of, uh, yeah, dirty looking movies. <laughs> not, not that many, but some. Um, yeah, so nice big cast of relatively well known faces. And it's another movie about, um, yeah, the struggles of life and loss. Um, here, the big issue is we have a family, two brothers, uh, one brother's girlfriend. And the mother and the mother has some mental issues, like she can't really function by herself and needs help for everything and uh, freaks out about very small things, uh, does very strange stuff with food. Um, I, I don't know how authentic that is or if that's maybe a little bit over-exaggerated, but uh, it's effective. So you can see this whole family struggles a lot because they have to take care of the mother and um, one of the brothers um, uh, uh, took over the uh, father's bar after the father's death and uh, the other brother uh, trains to become an MMA fighter or well, he is an MMA fighter and he's training for his big match that's maybe more correct and yeah they just uh, struggle with uh, daily life with their mother they struggle with not really having money this bar is a pretty big failure like it was already a failure when um the father owned it so that doesn't really work and uh yeah there's just just sadness and struggling and um yeah trying to somehow function outside of society they're basically not part of what's actually happening um 
yeah that's one of the big themes here and um yeah the the main protagonist here one of the brothers has this um yeah he, he he fantasizes about shooting himself and stuff so we have some um mental issues over there as well uh still struggling with the death of his father which is probably why he's doing that bar and yes they get in a lot of trouble because of the mother and um this brother then for example gets in a little bit of trouble with the police because the police treats other people very badly and uh, he's like why are you doing that and then they attack him as well so uh pretty similar to um happy end uh, the police is not your friend in this movie and that's kind of based on a true story what's going on here and uh yeah so they just try to 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 somehow figure out this whole situation try to be happy like he has his girlfriend tries to have a nice life with her then they have another friend that's the one played by shota somatani who uh, is getting married soon and the brother the mma fighter is friends with a police officer so at least there's one police officer that's a decent human being what a surprise yeah and um yeah, that's the, the main story and the big thing that we need to talk about will come in the uh, spoiler territory. And yeah, I, I just think it's a very good movie in the sense that it's very, very intense, very impactful when we get to this MMA fight. That's probably the best MMA fight I've seen since maybe... I would say warrior i would say it's one of the best sports scenes i've seen in years i don't want to compare to typical martial arts or fight scenes that's a little bit unfair because this is more realistic more sports oriented and i don't know mma is not a very interesting looking sport if you don't know what's going on like if, if, if you don't know mma just looks like guys rolling on the floor and uh, trying to uh get on top of the other i don't know it could be a very sexual thing but um yeah i think for people who are not into mma mma is not a very appealing looking uh, sport and how it's like filmed here it's super intense super physical uh, looks so violent uh, like it should um because i just put the camera into the cage with the fighters and just go with it and it's really amazing the whole movie except for this issue uh, it looks amazing the cast is great the whole how it's shot uh, great like i said it is very disturbing it's intense um yeah, maybe how the mother acts is a little over the top, but that really makes sure everyone understands that it's a horrible, horrible situation and nobody knows how to deal with it. Um, we have a visit in the hospital uh, where they try to figure out what's going on, but it's just like, ugh. Like, nothing really helps. They just have money issues. They have issues, like I said, with the police, issues here, issues there. And it's all just really, really depressing. And it just keeps getting worse. So much spoiler I had. So, yeah, I think it's really good to show the side of life. Like, I just talked about a super happy forever, which um, shows how people handle death which is a factor here too like with the father and so on but um yeah how do you handle life with a mentally disabled person and especially someone who hasn't always been like that um there are some some movies about uh, people with disabilities who have just had these disabilities all their life so um uh, like the parents just have to handle that situation from birth but here the kids have to take care of their mentally disabled mother which is a little bit different um 
level because usually the mother is the one who's supposed to take care of them and uh, you know it's reversed and uh, how this girlfriend handles this is a uh, really impressive like i mean if you get into a family like that how do you do that what do you do do you want to be with someone who has such a burden yeah I mean, she has a choice. They don't really have a choice. It's families they have to take care of her. But the girlfriend could just say, hey, that's too much trouble for me. I can't handle this. I'm going away. But she's not going away. She stays there and uh, tries to help him as good as she can. And uh, it's, uh, it's great to see. And, um, yeah, they just try to somehow function in this whole situation. And it's really just... Uh, disturbing and depressing um like the brother with his mma stuff he tries to make the best out of it and just trains hard and uh, yeah tries to get somewhere so the other one has more of a burden i guess and uh, yeah it's, it's just just really 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 a, a view on a part of society that you usually don't have like even in movies even in movies about um troubled families i guess it's a kind of special and yeah with this approach of um yeah so uh no uh that's quite a central theme here uh that gives it a little bit rougher more violent note and violence is something that we will get to in the spoiler part um and i guess we will get there now so from now on big big spoilers um because we have one more thing that we need to talk about when it comes to the storytelling because there's one very interesting thing going on that we actually switch protagonists uh like halfway through the movie or like two thirds through the movie because there's one brother who uh, has the bar um he wants to go to the wedding party of their friend and just in that moment three drunk guys come into his bar and start to beat him up uh, beat him up and uh, take him out uh, into the city and just keep beating him more and more he tries to get away and uh, of course police comes and um they realize oh you're the guy who made us who caused us trouble before you didn't respect us uh we will uh, yeah uh do some nasty stuff with you because like now he's like i have got something to do i've got to go somewhere i can't just stay here i've got to go to this wedding and he's already completely out of his mind and uh yeah they basically just uh pin him to the ground and uh put the like some cloth into his mouth and stuff and um uh, they're very very rough and violent with him and in the end he just dies yeah, and uh, the movie just keeps on for at least, like, I don't know, 30 minutes or something. So we have a big switch of the protagonist. We have even more loss to tackle. Um, so the brother who's training for his big fight now has to take care of the mother even more. He has to somehow handle the loss of his brother and uh, all these things at once. And it's just horrible. And he just tries to... to do his thing and uh yeah we get to the fight and he wins and then he's confronted with the bar there's still like uh, it must be days later and there's still the blood on the floor and broken stuff and all these things she's sitting there with his championship belt and uh yeah just sucks right and the police officer like seemingly when it comes to the real story the police officer got suspended for a short time and then just came back to work and um yeah here uh, he's played by uh, i think that's a uh, kenny t tuck is it no it's not kenny t tuck is, is he in this list maybe not but i i'm not sure i thought it was the same guy who plays the uh really nasty uh boss in uh blood of wolves i could be wrong but um yeah 
that's uh, at least he, he looks very similar uh, anyway like here with these two cops like one struggles a little bit uh, with hey we just killed someone and the other one is more like yeah well, let's uh, let's let it disappear and uh, if we just agree on what we say it will be fine right more like that so um yeah this this movie makes you really really hate the police um yeah i guess there are enough reasons to do that uh so yeah it's just really really depressing and intense and uh just hits you like a brick in the face and it's really really interesting great movie if i wasn't just too well, yeah yeah so that, that really annoyed me it could have been an absolutely brilliant amazing movie but they had to mess up this one thing which really really annoyed me i mean if it's like an okay standard indie movie i don't care so much but if it's like the super high level like could be one of the highlights of the year movies and then they do this stuff to me like like i said this kitchen is supposed to be a big mess but it's like all color coded like why why just throw stuff in there and make it look chaotic like it should but no it looks like a music video and or a beer commercial and yeah that's just so distracting i really didn't like that but everything else is just another really really great movie i should rewatch his earlier film here the um sasaki in my mind i'm really like i i remember watching it and liking it but uh now i feel like yeah i should really give it another try maybe there's more in there so uh yeah, I hope this gets some more attention. It didn't really pl like it played one or two relatively big cinemas in Osaka. Um, I guess it will do the rounds through the smaller ones after that, but it didn't really feel like it gets a lot of lots of attention here. So I hope there's more to get later and i hope it plays some festivals and i'm so sad that i've i went out there with this negative feeling because of this one small issue because everything else is just so good and uh, yeah i hope uh, people can watch and aren't as annoyed by silly stuff like i am and with that i just want to finish here and uh Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Don't don't do this to yourself and we will talk about that in the next video. Bye.